why Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas must go. That is the topic of today's Bold and Blunt, and I'm your host, Cheryl Chumley, giving you a Christian conservative look at today's news, politics, culture, and events. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. How many articles of impeachment have been filed and how many articles of impeachment have been tabled, stalled, held in the wings under a Republican-dominated House? Well, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is the latest who has seen her articles of impeachment against Mayorkas just shoved to the side, just placed back on the table in a 209 to 201 vote, the House chamber just recently decided to shelve the resolution, the impeachment articles, the resolution introduced by Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, and supported instead a motion to refer the articles to the Homeland Security Committee. So once again, articles impeachment against the leading Democrat official in this White House responsible for letting in how many millions of illegals now? It's really hard to get a head count on this, right? 3.8 million, 3.6 million, 10 million, 5 million. Really at this point, who knows? Who's even counting anymore because it's just open border down there. But the Homeland Security Secretary is supposed to be in charge of Homeland Security, meaning America's security, which falls under border protection. And guess what? He's just standing by, just standing idly by, allowing all these illegals to to come into America. And shamefully, when these recent articles of impeachment were being brought forward by the Congresswoman from Georgia, Marjorie Taylor Greene, eight House Republicans, yes, voted to shelve this resolution. Remember, the vote was 209 to 201. Thank you, Republicans, for not going forward with this. Before I go further, I want to quickly mention, if you like Bold and Blunt, you may get Bold and Blunt at edify.app, at washingtontimes.com, at Real Life Network, and wherever podcasts are offered. And if you go to washingtontimes.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, find the newsletter section, click on it, and look for Bold and Blunt with Cheryl Chumley. Sign up for my newsletter, please. Just put in your email address, and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you will get delivered right to your email box the commentaries that I write all day long at the Washington Times, giving you the bullet points you need to fight the far left, the Marxist, the communist, also known as the Democrat Party, and as well as my twice-weekly Tuesday and Thursday Bold and Blunt podcasts. So, in recent testimony, Mayorkas was, before congressional members, being questioned by none other than Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, and it was some fiery questions that she shot his way because she held a picture of a couple, an elderly couple. She held that up in Congress, and referred to this couple as being victims of a 17-year-old cartel member who was let in America illegally under, under the secretary's watch, and she was just simply requesting a little bit of information. Why are illegals being allowed to come into America and kill American citizens? So listen to some of this questioning on the part of Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Secretary Mayorkas, I want you to look at these innocent Americans. Do you see them? It's the picture. I do, Congresswoman. They are dead. They're from Dalton, Georgia, in my district. They're dead because a 17-year-old, likely affiliated with the cartels, was smuggling illegal aliens into our country in Texas, breaking our laws. And this happens every single day in our country. Earlier this week, eight Republicans joined the Democrats and protected your job. But I want you to know, you have a short time coming. You can honorably resign or we are going to impeach you. And it's happening very, very soon. See, that's what Americans want to hear, right? Go back in time. Go back in time to when Donald Trump 
came to the forefront of the political world, 2015, 2016, and the issue that catapulted him ahead of his, what was it, 17 or 18 Republican primary challengers? It was Kate Steinle, the woman on, on a here in California who was shot and killed by an illegal who had been previously deported five times because of his felonious record, not to mention the fact that he was here illegally. But he was in San Francisco. He was in California on that particular pier on that particular day and pulled the trigger on the particular gun that shot and killed Kate Steinle as she walked with her father on that pier. He was there because of the sanctuary status of that city in California that welcomed, welcome, welcome to our city, illegals. We don't care if you are felons or not. That's why he was in the city that particular day. And it was Donald Trump who spoke so openly and repeatedly about Kate Steinle as an example of what was taking place in communities across the nation. Americans being killed by illegals, whether gunned down by illegals carrying guns illegally. Democrats, where are you on gun control there? or mowed down by illegals driving drunk illegally, or otherwise injured, or facing property damage, and so forth and so on. The list goes on and on. And it was Donald Trump who refused to back off that issue. And so it was law and order, open borders, illegal immigration, but really the face of Kate Steinle that really rallied Americans behind Donald Trump, the sane Americans, the sane conservatives, right? Because they saw in Donald Trump somebody who would not stand down on this issue. And they saw in Donald Trump somebody who would not go to Capitol Hill and join a gang of eight and work with Democrats behind closed doors as a Republican and come forward with some sort of quasi-reform and call that the solution to border control when really all it does is advance open borders even more, right? Or it legalizes those who came illegally. It makes concessions with the illegals. They saw in Donald Trump somebody who would stand strong for America first, and that's what he did. So here we have Marjorie Taylor Greene pushing the same sort of common sense questions and common sense immigration and common sense border control measures on Capitol Hill to the key guy in charge of border control who looked at that picture, and I'm going to let Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene herself tell you his response to what she said and the picture that she held up and asked him, asked him about, because she's here today on Bold and Blunt. She has a new book out. It's called MTG, the initials of her name, right? And it's all about her response to deep state swamp-like politicking that has struck hard at her constitutional, very lonely stance sometimes on Capitol Hill in the years that she has served. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, thank you so much for being on Bold and Blunt. It is great to have you here. Thanks. I'm, I'm happy to be here today. Your new book, MTG, Exposing the Swamp, uh, you certainly do that on Capitol Hill. And I, w- I watched with great interest your questioning uh, just recently of Mayorkas. I found it very compelling when you held up that photo of the elderly couple in your district killed because of the open borders. Can you talk a little bit about the impeachment of Mayorkas and why that seems to have stalled? Yes, I I am very angered and upset. Um, I had introduced articles of impeachment, and I'm not the only member of Congress. There are multiple uh, articles of impeachment against Secretary Mayorkas, and mine have been sitting on a shelf in the Judiciary Committee collecting dust 
Uh, no one has picked them up. No one has picked up any of the articles of impeachment against Mayorkas. And that is extremely frustrating to me, especially since we're in a Republican majority and can control that. And um, then two weeks ago, when this very sweet couple from Dalton, Georgia, in my district, Jose and Isabel Lerma, uh, were killed, tragically killed, in Texas uh, as they were traveling to go visit family in Mexico um, by a 17-year-old cartel member smuggling illegal aliens into Texas. I, I just couldn't believe it. I've had enough, and so I introduced a privilege resolution, bringing my forcing my articles of impeachment to the floor um, because I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, this poor couple, uh, th th this is happening to Americans all the time. They are getting murdered. This is such a frequent thing. Um, Tony Gonzalez, that represents the district where it happened in, uh, he's had constituents killed the exact same way in these, these uh, illegal being smuggled in the country in terrible car crashes. And, um, and then we've got 300 dying every single day from fentanyl. So I, I introduced them, and then I couldn't believe, you know, after eight Republicans joined Democrats and protected Mayorkas, stopped the impeachment, um, then I faced him on the Homeland uh, Committee hearing, and when I held up that picture, he showed no remorse. He did not even look like he was sorry. He, the look in his eye was, he looked like he could care less. Really? And that was the most unbelievable moment. I just could not believe it. And, and I think everyone really needs to understand that right before my questioning, Representative Garcia, Democrat, asked him, how do you feel about the word invasion? And Secretary America said, I am offended by the word invasion. But yet he didn't move, didn't bat an eye, and didn't even care that, my, that those two constituents of mine in my district were murdered and I, killed I, in our own country. I was, going, I was going to ask you about his response because, um, you know, the clip I saw, his, his face wasn't on camera. And it it's really compelling. People should go to your Twitter feed, your X feed, and check it out. It's only a couple minute clip, and it, it's very, uh, it's very emotional to see you sitting there and holding the picture of these the, this lovely looking couple, like you said. And then you said, "Well, they're dead." And I was so curious what his response was. And you're saying it was just a blank face. A completely blank stare. No emotion on his face. No remorse. No sorrow. Uh, he, he, he stared at me with a smug look on his face. And it was, I, I, it was so enraged. I couldn't even believe it. And then I switched to um, Director Ray, uh, FBI Director Christopher Ray, yes. who was sitting next to him, and, and went straight into questioning him about if he knew anything about the group called Global Intifada that organized the illegal occupation of the Cannon uh, House office building on October 18th, and he knew nothing about it, and he and he just brushed it off like he didn't even care. And the word, and I asked him, I said, "Do you know what the word intifada? Do you know, know the definition?" And he said, "No, I don't." And I said, "It means Arabic uprising. It means jihad." And then I showed him a picture of a screenshot that we had taken a picture of one of the um, organizers texting in a group chat, and the top of the chat said "Global Intifada." And one of the names in the chat was Katrina Bleakley, who is the lead attorney at the Southern Poverty Law Center. Christopher Ray had no idea, didn't even care, even though he was there testifying to us about terrorism, about terrorists that have come in our country, um, and the dangers of an open border. And he didn't even know that they had come in our own federal buildings. And over 300 of them had gotten arrested on October 18th. Now, look, I, I saw that clip as well, also posted on your Twitter X account. Uh, and I, I suggest that people go and watch that as well. It's only a couple of minutes. And I thought you did a very good job of tying his uh, ignorance of that arrest to the ongoing FBI and deep state investigation of the J6 protesters. And what is, what is going on with these people in America who have been put in jail where, where charges just languish? it seems, from January 6th. They, the FBI and the Department of Justice right now are literally operating as the campaign arm for Joe Biden's campaign for presidency in 2024. And they are abusing their power. Uh, this is one of the scariest things that's happening that I, I think we've ever seen in our lifetime. 
outside of the COVID lockdown uh, that took away all of our freedoms. But they, they are literally targeting, hunting these people that may have even just stood on Capitol grounds, maybe walked up too close to the Capitol, maybe walked in open doors in the Capitol. I'm talking about grandmothers. I am talking about veterans. We are talking about people that pay their taxes, have never been arrested. Um, we're talking about good Americans that were Trump supporters that, that just, just naively un, uh, went into the Capitol on January 6th. They are hunting them down this very day, and it's been nearly four years, nearly four years. And uh, it, it is just unbelievable to me, and I'm so frustrated with my Republican colleagues that they, they are not stopping this. We should be using every single ounce of our power, which is the power of the checkbook, uh, because we own it in the House, to stop them, and we're not. We don't have enough Republicans that see this as a grave threat to, to our entire country. Yes. Um, this is why I wrote my book, MTG, um, and I hope people order it at mtgbook.com. Because I really wanted people to see a behind-the-scenes look at what is happening in Congress. I tell the stories um, behind the headlines, the horrible headlines about me. I tell what was happening in my life at that time and, and the real story behind the headlines. Um, since the media created a character of me that doesn't exist. And I really can't wait for people to get my book, MTG, at mtgbook.com. Uh, because I really, I think it's right. People need to know what's happening and... Um, I think it'll be a good read for people over the holidays. Yes, and I, I'm glad you you pivoted to that because that's what I wanted to segue into next. I, I wanted to talk about in in your research for your book. Do you talk about Republicans as well? Republicans that constituents actually think go to Capitol Hill to do the uh, good conservative work and then turn tail and and jump in bed with Democrats. Do, do you name Republicans in your book? I do name names, and I think people will be surprised if some of the names that I name. Um, one, of, one of the issues that I really care about is stopping these horrific, uh, barbaric genital mutilation surgeries on kids. You know, adults are one thing. Adults can choose their own, make their own decisions. But anybody under the age of 18 should not be having mastectomies. Uh, they should not be having castration surgeries. To, to change their body to look the way they think they want it to look because they're still kids. And that's a permanent uh, decision. And, and it's unbelievable how many of these people have these surgeries and regret it. And, and it ruins their lives, ruins their health. And they have tremendous uh, medical problems uh, ongoing for the rest of their lives because of these awful surgeries. And um, I, I talk, I have a whole chapter about that. And I name uh, some of the Republicans that people would be shocked that are against my bill, Protect Children's Innocence Act, um, that don't want to pass it. And so I look forward to people understanding, you know, because I think the frustration right now among Republican voters is they're ready to vote for President Trump, can't wait to have him back in the White House, but they're fed up with Republicans in Congress because our conference uh, and our majority has done absolutely nothing about the things that people yell and scream about on a daily basis. It's like our, our uh, Republicans in Congress are tone deaf, and, and I'm, I'm sick and tired of it, too. Uh, so, yeah, I, I do. I jump out there and name names, and I'm, I'm completely happy to do that. And, and in your book, uh, just out now, MTG, through uh, Winning Team is, is your publisher. Do you talk more about your faith? Because I know that your faith drives a lot of what you push for in terms of constitutional rights on Capitol Hill. Yeah, I do talk about my faith. Um, my faith and, and just being unapologetically American is is what has driven me into Congress. I, I never in my life thought I would be even elected on a local level, let alone at the federal level. And um, it's, it's something that's very important to me. It's, it's the base of my thoughts and, and my decisions. Um, you know, I'm not the kind of Christian that's going to go out preaching, preaching, preaching at people, but it is, it is very important and personal to me. So did you, were, were you happy with the selection of Mike Johnson as speaker? Because he's pretty open with his faith and unapologetic about it as well. Yeah, that's something I very much 
admire about Mike Johnson, and I, I think he's a really nice guy. Now, I don't have uh, a very close relationship with him. I, I just didn't really know him that well. Uh, when when this, the whole situation arose where we had to elect a new speaker. Um, but, you know, um, for me, it's action. I'm into action, not necessarily words. And I was disappointed uh, that he passed the, that CR this past week. Totally clean. Just completely extending Nancy Pelosi's budget, giving Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer everything that they wanted uh, uh, into January. And it's not just one CR, it's basically two, because it has two deadlines. Uh, so I was, I, I don't like that. I'm, I'm unhappy with that. And I didn't vote for the other two, two CRs under Speaker McCarthy. Um, and so I, I didn't vote for this one either. And, uh, you know, time will tell. We'll, we'll see, have to watch his actions. You know, that's always my advice to people. Don't get caught up into personalities. Um, you know, judge people by what they do with their job and with their power and if they actually do what Republican voters want them to do. So last question, because I know our time is tight and you have a lot going on right now. So in your book, MTG, which you can get at mtgbook.com, and I assume wherever uh, books are offered, correct? Amazon and, and, and elsewhere? Yes, yes, yes. They're, so, they're pretty much everywhere. So what are, Hudson Books. Hudson Books in the airport refused to sell my book. Are you serious? <laughs> Okay, so something like that happens, and that just drives people out even more uh, in the conservative camp to buy books, right? Don't they know that yet? Haven't they learned that lesson yet? <laughs> but, <laughs> you would think, but I think uh, they prove who they are. They they believe in the trans agenda that is the most evil thing uh, attacking our kids today outside of abortion. I, I agree with that. So just, just to finish on this last question, you're always being attacked. What are some of the clarifications that people can learn about you in MTG that the media refuses to report? Well, one of my chapters is about Jewish space lasers. You know, that's an attack that the left constantly uses on me. But it's a phrase that I myself never use. Uh, so I tell that story. I think people will find that fascinating. Um, I tell the story about getting kicked off committees when 11 Republicans joined with Democrats to kick me off committees after I'd only been in Congress for one month. Um, I tell the, where I was and, and my experience on January 6th and visiting the political prisoners, uh, being one of the only people to visit them. Uh, back in, in in 2021 when they were being held for 23 hours a day in solitary confinement. So I, I tell these stories, um, and I think they're important. They need to be told because you won't read about them uh, in, in, in the media, and certainly crazy liberal shows like The View are not going to tell my story accurately. They're going to continue to demonize me and yeah. the people that I, that I work for and represent. Well, that, that's a sure bet. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, you are at the tip of the spear. Thank you for your fight. And MTG is the book available anywhere except Hudson Books at the airport. But who cares? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. This has been fun. All right. Have a good day. You too. MTG is the title of the book available at MTG Book. Dot com or wherever books are offered, but not the airport. Thank you for listening. I want to remind you, if you like Bold and Blunt, you may get Bold and Blunt at edify.app, at washingtontimes.com, at Real Life Network, and wherever podcasts are offered. Tune in next time. And in the meanwhile, stay blunt, stay bold. Marketing is hard. But I'll tell you a little secret. It doesn't have to be. Let me point something out. You're listening to a podcast right now, and it's great. You love the host. You seek it out and download it. You listen to it while driving, working out, cooking, even going to the bathroom. Podcasts are a pretty close companion. And this is a podcast ad. Did I get your attention? You can reach great listeners like yourself with podcast advertising from Libsyn Ads. Choose from hundreds of top podcasts offering host endorsements or run a pre-produced ad like this one across thousands of shows to reach your target audience in their favorite podcasts with Libsyn Ads.
Go to libsynads.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N, ads.com today.